One of the simplest motors you can make is a coiled wire motor. The first time I made one of these years ago, I was by myself following instructions I had found that were titled the five minute motor. Well, it probably took me two full hours before I got it to work. So hopefully this video will help you so that it doesn't take you quite so long to get yours working. So I'm going to take about two feet of thin wire. It's normally called bell wire. Cut off the piece. And this is going to be the wire I use for my coil. Now, you can make coils of different diameters. I've found that the diameter of a D cell generally works quite well for this. So I'm going to take that wire, leave a little bit hanging over the edge, and I'm going to wrap it around one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven times. It depends on how long your wire is. So I gently slide it off the D cell, and now this part is very tricky. I have to tie it off. Now some people will just wrap it around a bunch of times and pull it off. I like to just tie a granny knot. The wire is flexible enough where you can tie it like you're tying a knot in a shoelace. So I pull it through once, and then I'm going to pull it through again to keep it from slipping. Now on the other side, I have to make sure that that knot is tied so that it is 180 degrees off of the first one. They need to split the loop in the middle. A diameter needs to go through the center. It's very important that your loop is balanced. The better balanced it is, the more likely your motor is going to work. After you've um, tied them, you'll probably have to reshape your loop. And if you twist it between your fingers, you can get an idea of how balanced it is. This one is not great, but it's not horrible. So I'm not at the 0, 0180. One of these is a little bit too far over. Now, you can trim off some of the leads. Uh, I would leave it about two inches for right now because um, you can always cut it shorter, but you can't cut it longer. Now, the loop is going to be held in place by our paper clips, and we're going to take the large paper clip, open them up, and bend them around a nail in order to form the loop holders. So I'm going to bend it around like this, and I'll have to do the other one. And what we want is for the end to end up looking similar to a safety pin end. So obviously if you're doing this with young children, they may need some help bending the paper clip. Now the paper clips are going to be connected to our, the positive and negative of our dry cell. So to hold those on, we'll use a large rubber band. So if I take this rubber band and fold it over double, I've got nice paper clip holders, so I will slide that in there. Make sure that the paper clip is touching the silvery metal end, and we do the other end. Now, our ceramic disc magnet, I buy these at Lowe's. A six pack used to cost $1.99. I think they went up to about $3 for a six pack, so they're about 50 cents a piece. And we're just going to place that on the dry cell. Now, because it's a magnet, it stays on, you don't have to worry about um, needing to glue it or anything like that. So our loop will go in between there, and ideally, current will run through this loop. The magnetic field from the permanent magnet below it will push on, interact with the magnetic field around the current bearing loop and cause it to spin. But when we do this, 
nothing happens. So you might be a little bit disappointed and think, oh no, I didn't do it right. Well, nothing's happening because there's no current flowing through the loop. This is not red wire. This is copper wire that has red paint on it for insulation. So we're not going to get any motion until we have current going through this wire to produce the magnetic field around the wire. So we have to scrape off insulation. This part is very, very important. If you don't scrape it correctly, your motor will not work. What we need to do is have the loop vertical and scrape off the top half of one lead and the top half of the other. I use sandpaper to do that. So I'm going to set it on the edge of the table with it vertical and I'm going to scrape it off. And then I'm going to turn it around, set it on the edge of the table, and scrape this end. So I'm going to scrape it all the way to the loop. So now I've got the top half of this side and the top half of this side scraped off. So whenever that part that's scraped makes contact with our paper clip, we'll have current flowing through the loop. So I try to get it balanced as best as possible. I place it in between the two paper clips. I want to move my loop close to the magnet, but not touching. The magnetic field is stronger when it's closer. Sometimes it'll start spinning right away. Sometimes you got to give it a little bit of a kick to get it going. But here you have it. Now, if you don't scrape properly, it's not going to work. So if you scrape too little, you can always scrape more. If you scrape too much, well, you're in trouble, but you don't have to start all over with a new wire. You can use a Sharpie and paint insulation back on your wire lead and then rescrape. Sometimes if it doesn't work with one magnet, if you put a second magnet in, that'll make the magnetic field stronger and make it more likely to spin. And if it was already spinning like mine was, having two magnets makes it spin faster. So what's happening is that the magnetic field from the permanent magnet puts a force on the magnetic field around the current bearing wire and that makes it spin. So this definitely took less than five minutes so I've gotten much better at making this motor.